Hey everybody, Chris here. Good to have you back with us. Uh, today, we're gonna have a little bit of fun. See this Dell Dimension 2400 here? We're gonna take it and load Windows 3.11 for work groups on it. Not Windows 98, not Windows XP like it was designed for, but Windows 3.11. So, that begs the question, why? Why would we do this? Well, here's my thinking. Retro PCs are becoming more expensive. Dell Dimension 2400s, they're kind of a dime a dozen. So what we're gonna do is take this PC and load an older operating system on it so that you can have that retro experience on a budget. Let's get right to it. So to get started here, we've loaded MS-DOS 6.22 onto the system. And I'll say that I've somewhat optimized this PC with this DOS installation in preparation for the Windows installation. So let's have a look at config sys and auto exec bat to show what sort of optimizations we've done. First of all, we've loaded an XMS memory driver, IMM sys. We've also loaded EMM386 to give us upper memory blocks. And we've set this to the no EMS option and also excluded a particular region of that upper memory block so that we don't end up trampling the network card address. Also set our files and buffers to relatively high numbers loaded a CD-ROM driver, set our last drive to a rather uh, large letter, if you will, also configured our stacks parameter and set DOS to, to use the high and upper memory block regions. Now let's have a look at auto exec bat. So in auto exec bat, we're basically just loading the CD-ROM extension MSCDEX to give that CD-ROM a drive letter and loading a mouse driver. So that's pretty much it. Okay. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and install Windows 3.11 and run the setup program. And we're going to do a custom setup. So C, we'll install a C colon backslash Windows. And as far as hardware configuration is concerned, we'll go with the defaults for now, though we will change the display a little bit later on. All right, so we'll go ahead and copy the files and then proceed to the graphical portion of setup. At this point, the system's going to be looking for a network card. It will not find one. And then from there, we can put in some license information and continue. Okay, so I never set up printers or applications, so we'll go ahead and continue. And we'll just go with the default installations. I think we've got plenty of space. All right, so at this point, all the files are gonna be copied on to the system as the installation proceeds. And from there, we can go ahead and set up our network. So we're gonna set up a Microsoft network and we need to add a network card. So to do that, I'm gonna add an adapter, which is gonna be unlisted or updated. We're gonna to navigate to C colon setup network. And this to v3.07 and click okay. And there we have a network adapter. Now. Unfortunately, that was not a trivial thing to get prepared for setup. So let's take a minute and talk through how I got us to that point. Okay, about those network drivers. Well, not the hardest to install. Unfortunately, they're not the easiest either. Here's the deal. The Dell Dimension 2400 uses the Broadcom 440X chipset. And while there are NDIS2 drivers available, which we typically use for Windows for Workgroups 311, those NDIS2 drivers do not have an OEM setup file to accompany. So what we're going to do is this. First, we're gonna download the drivers for the 440X card. Second, we will download drivers for the 57XX card and steal the OEM setup.inf file from those, customize it a bit, and then use it for our purposes. All right. So first, let's download those 40, 440X drivers. First link we get on Google should be just fine. We can go ahead and download the file. We can run it. It's going to extract to this directory. Okay. We can now go and download our 57XX drivers. We have to be a little bit more careful with these. The first link may not be exactly what we want. Then again, it might. 
and it looks like in this case it is. So we'll go ahead and download those. Once that completes, we'll click on it and extract those. Okay, now we have both sets of drivers. Let's navigate to C colon backslash Dell. And there's two sets of drivers. The last one we extracted, as you can see by the date modified, are the 57XX drivers. So let's navigate to the DOS NDIS2 directory and grab OEM setup.inf. I'm going to do a control C. Now let's navigate back to the first set of drivers we downloaded. Go to the DOS directory, NDIS2, V307, and paste that OEM setup. Now let's modify it. And hopefully we can just do a find and replace. We want to find everywhere where we see 57 and replace it with 44. And let's do a replace all. And then we can close this. And lo and behold, now we are all set. So I'm going to go ahead and close this file. And the next thing you're going to want to do is take this DOS and this 2 V307 folder and copy these to the dimension 2400. Okay, so now that we've covered that, let's go ahead and get back and finish the installation. All right, so now that we've installed our network card, we have two network drivers here, but there are our protocols here, but they are protocols we don't really want. We really want TCP IP, so let's add a protocol. And in this case, it's going to be unlisted or updated since TCP IP uh, did not ship with Windows 3.1.1 for workgroups. And what I've done is I've taken the TCP 32B setup program and run it. And it now exists in this directory here of C colon backslash setup network TCP. We'll click OK there and the driver gets found. And now it's installed. Let's go ahead and remove these protocols that we don't need. And let's set TCP IP to be the default protocol. And let's configure it. I'm going to double click there. And to configure it, I just basically want to turn on DHCP. And we'll choose OK. And then we'll close. Now we can continue. As for the username, Chris is fine. As for the computer name, Chris is not. Since I already have a computer on the network named Chris. So we'll call this Chris though. Continue. Network's going to configure. And we'll let Windows modify our setup files for us. And we're going to skip the tutorial. All right, at this point, we're ready to restart the computer. So let's see what we get on startup here. And uh, from there, we can proceed to configure sound and video. All right. So here we can see auto exec bat loading some drivers, the network card loading. Uh oh. Looks like we have an issue here with insufficient memory. That can't be a good thing. Let's go have a look at what Windows 3.1.1 did to our config system auto exec bat. So apart from switching our device drivers to use Windows as it typically does, it also loaded Smart Drive. This machine is relatively fast. I don't feel that we need Smart Drive. I'm going to take it out. And as for auto exec bat, I think we'll find something similar. Let's take it out there. And since I'm a bit of a neat freak, I want to put this other statement after the echo off. There we go. All right. At this point, let's reboot again, because we're dealing with DOS. What's the secret to configuration in DOS? Reboot, reboot, reboot. Every time you make a change, it's time to reboot. So here we are. Let's keep an eye on it and see how we did. Loading our Broadcom driver. And what do you know? This time we had enough memory available to load MSCDEX. So we're in good shape. All right. So next up, let's go ahead and configure video. So I'm going to go to the Windows directory and launch the setup program. And what I'm going to do is configure the driver for display to be the Super VGA driver with small fonts. And we'll do a resolution of 1024 by 768. Now, it's worth noting that when Windows 3.1.1 was released with this driver, it was a very specialized driver for a specific video card. So what we're going to do is after we select it, is we're going to patch it to make it Visa compliant. All right. Now to do that, we're going to use a program called VGA Patch, which I also downloaded from the internet. 
And I just so conveniently happen to have it already copied to this machine. So we're going to copy VGA patch to the Windows system directory, and then we're going to run it by doing VGA patch P. And that will patch our video driver. And now we should have 256 colors at 1024 by 768 with a Visa compliant driver. Let's go ahead and launch Windows and we'll set up the sound. All right. Loading up. Look at that nice video resolution there. That's a little bit better than 640 by 480, if I do say so myself. And since this is our first login, uh, we need to go ahead and set a password. And I'm going to make a very super secure password. There it is. All right. Let's take advantage of some of the screen real estate a little bit here. Okay. So next up, let's go ahead and configure sound. So to do that, we're going to go to the control panel, go to drivers, and we're going to add a very special driver. So we're going to go to unlisted or updated driver. We're going to browse the drive C, setup, sound, and grab this driver. So let me take a minute and explain to you where this came from. So for Windows 3.1 sound drivers for newer sound cards, there happens to be a great solution out there. And that solution is put together on this website, turkeysforme.bythehost4.com. Here what we have is a series of drivers that support different sound cards. In our case, our Dell Dimension 2400 has an AC97 compliant sound card. So we can download this driver here. But for those with Ensenique chipsets or other chipsets like the HDA, there's lots of great options here. I totally encourage you to check this out. For now, let's go ahead and take care of that Dimension 2400. So we're gonna download this right here. It's gonna download a 7-zip file. We can then use 7-zip to drill into this and grab this AC97DRVA directory, which has both drivers and the source code for these drivers available, which we can then take and copy over to the Dimension 2400. All right, let's proceed. So I'm going to go ahead here and click OK, and then OK again, and there it is, that ICH sound card driver we downloaded, ready to go. Click OK, we're going to get an option to configure, the defaults are fine, so we can click OK there, close this dialog box, close the control panel, now let's go ahead and restart Windows and see if we have some sound. Loading up here. Hey, look at that. We've got sound and we've got video. So now that we have this, I think it's time to have some fun. Let's install the Windows Entertainment Pack and play a game. So to do that, I'm going to go to File Manager here. But rather than just pulling the installer off of my local machine, let's install it over the network. So to do that, I'm going to connect up to my Raspberry Pi. I use the Raspberry Pi to host all of my uh, installers for my old retro PCs since it tends to play better with your older SMB protocols. We'll map that to drive D. I'll come in here to my retro folder, come in here to my games folder, my Windows Entertainment Pack, and let's install my favorite of the Entertainment Packs, number four. All right. We'll choose the defaults there for the pack. There we can see it installing away. Working on the disk 2 now, so that's good. Not bad for an installation over the network. And we're all set. Okay. Let's launch Chimps Challenge. And we'll turn on our sound effects. Now, one thing to note about this installation. As I noted, it is a budget installation. <laughs> so we're using the uh, onboard sound for this particular installation. And we did find an AC97 driver for that, but we don't have any MIDI. In a future video, I think I may try to rectify that. More to come. But for now, let's enjoy Chip's Challenge with just WAV file support. Here we can navigate around, grab our chips. You can see that the video is a little bit choppy. That's kind of the nature of Chip's Challenge anyway. So even with really good video drivers, it's still going to be choppy. Grab the green key there. There we go. Got a red key and a green key. We can go grab this chip. And 
And lo and behold, we are the champions of Chips Challenge Level 1. Look at us. Anyway, that's all I have to, for today. I appreciate you tuning in and watching. Feel free to leave comments below. Uh, give a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. If you didn't, give a thumbs down. That's fine too. Uh, always appreciate your feedback. And uh, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.